Well, thank you everybody for joining us and welcome back to another episode of JMI TV. Uh, today we have Kyle Lake from Baumer Instruments and he's gonna be sharing a unique product often used in the food and bev and pharmaceutical industries. Um, as we all know, response time in many of these industries can be the difference between a good batch and a bad batch of product, um, the right amount of CIP fluid or an unnecessary amount of CIP fluid. Uh, so here to show us the features that make the Baumer Combolize not only the fastest analytical sensor on the market, but also a very simply intuitive product. We have Kyle Lake with us. Kyle, I am going to give you permission to share your screen. And Thank you. Thanks for having me back again. Yeah, take it away. All right. Am I sharing again now? I can see it. Yep, perfect. Oh, good. All right. Well, thanks again. I like like uh, Andrew mentioned. We're going to talk about the Combolize, what we like to call the AFI four or five AFI X. It's a conductivity transmitter that we at Polymer here make. Um, the first thing we're going to do is get my controls working. I introduce myself. I've been with Polymer for about two and a half years now. Let's update this slide a little bit uh, about. 15 years of process experience. I still have three girls and a wife, so that hasn't changed. Uh, that's why my hair is looking thinner all the time. Uh, I have a degree in marketing from the University of Utah. So we're going to talk about uh, AFI 4 and 5, a conductivity measurement with the inductive type, uh, what we call the donut or, or toroidal type. Uh, you can see the little opening. It helps if I do it on the right screen here, a little opening uh, on the uh, sensor. That's where we do our measurement points there. So some of the key points about this is the peak body here is pretty much impervious to most chemicals. I haven't run into anything that really can damage peak. Uh, it also gives us a smooth flow characteristic so it doesn't interrupt the flow of what's going through the pipes. Um, We'll kind of get into some of this stuff down here at the bottom a little bit more. But basically, your fluid is going to uh, flow through here, change the current. We're going to read that. We have an amplifier. It's going to put it out as a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. And uh, it gives us both the conductivity slash concentration as well as the temperature. The RTD is this little part right here. Um, and one of the key benefits of ours is this is a solid peak formed around the entire thing. Uh, the entire probe and RTD. Um, some of the, the competitors have this as a two part, uh, and you get some fracking and thermal fracking as they go uh, from hot to cold. So, again, the PT100, we do offer that as an output as well. So, you can get the temperature as a separate 4 to 20. So, it's a, a good way to measure what's going on in the pipe uh, from a temperature standpoint all the time. And then when you need your conductivity for phase shift, cleaning, anything like that. So you can see here we have two different sizes. We're going to get into the knots a little bit more. And uh, yeah. So we have our compact version. So this is going to be all in one your transmitter with your dual 4 to 20 outputs and the probe right here. Uh, traditionally, when people think of conductivity or any kind of analytical measurement, they think of uh, the remote versions here where you have your probe and a long cable that comes to a transmitter and then continues on with your 4 to 20 output. Um, we feel this compact version, it's, it's well built. It's an IP69K unit. It can easily withstand being on the machine. It can handle vibrations. It can handle a lot of things. Uh, the touchscreen display makes it easy to program. So when you're right there and want indication or programming, it's a good option. We do offer it as a blind unit. Um, again, uh, the cost savings with using something like this as a compact unit are just amazing. Um, while the whole unit itself is very cost competitive, um, there's a big savings when we go to the compact. We offer three insertion depths for the different size pipes and tanks you may have. Um, 37 millimeters, going to be for your smaller one inch in 25 pipes and smaller uh, or if you have a real small tank uh, the din 60 is probably or the 60 millimeter is probably the most common uh, we use this in our uh, din uh, 50 pipes so two inch pipes 
And then 83 millimeters for large tanks are very popular, or if you have large three to four inch pipes. Um, when we insert this into the pipe, we want to make sure that the opening is into the flow. Uh, so we don't quite need to be completely in the center of the pipe, but we want to be as close as possible. We need to make sure there's flow going through the opening or the donut. Same thing for the remote mount, the different versions. Uh, because this is peak, and you can kind of see the angled area right here of the peak. When this screws into an adapter, you do get a 3A crevice free fitting. So it is uh, perfectly good to be in contact with food and cleanable. Uh, if you do need a remote mount, we have two and a half, five, and 10 meter cables. Um, these are pre-made at the factory. It's a, it's a matched pair, so they are calibrated together. So it's not something we're going to be re repairing on site. Uh, it will have to go back if anything were to happen. Just a little bit better view of it. Um, with the cable glands, you actually get an IP67 rating. Uh, with the M12s, you get an IP69K. Uh, that includes the, the display and everything, as long as the housing ring is securely fastened. Uh, we have the ability for a what we call our bottom mount or our rear mount. So if it's in a pipe that's maybe above your head or that you're going to be looking down on, you might want to go with the rear mount so you can see the display a little bit better. Uh, we've got uh, one of the key features of the, of the AFI is the Defon display. Um, this is used on all of our instruments with the display. It's touch screen like it shows here. Uh, the nice thing is all the different built-in values and displays you can get. And then when it goes into an air mode, it's actually color changing. So it is an actual back, backlit display. Uh, very easy to read. Some of the special uh, displays that are available with the AFI, uh, you've got your conduct. Uh, your connectivity slash concentration and tagging. Um, I like that one. I also use the uh, the concentration of detail. So you may have this uh, tell you what's going through your pipe. So in the case of maybe a brewery, uh, when you're doing a, a cleaning, it's going to tell you when there's water. Uh, you can also tag it to show you CIP, uh, then your beer or whatever may be going through there. Uh, also, if you're just looking for uh, phase shift and you want to see what's going through the pipes at any certain time. You've got your media label. Those are all programmable. And then your tag is going to be out of the, the unit itself when you put a tag in. So again, uh, you've got some great messages here. When you go into an air, uh, this can flash. It can just be red. Uh, it can flash white, green. The question is, how do we mount this, right? We have threads here, which everybody knows is not a 3A acceptable device. We have all kinds of different mounting options here. So we've got some weld-in for tanks. Uh, we've got weld-in for pipe. It's a G1-inch hygienic connection here. And this part is actually free moving. So you can actually rotate the display in the, the direction you want it as you tighten it. We have our tri-clamp connection. Uh, we're also going to use that function to make sure that the Donut ends up uh, perpendicular to the flow rate, so we get a good flow through the donut. Uh, we have our different DIN, uh, Veravent, uh, SMS, all those kinds of things, and the associated nuts to go with those. One of the unique features is we have 14 built in ranges that are pre configured, and you can assign these uh, one through four. So the factory sets it up uh, with range one being zero to 200, what we see being the most common. And then you go down through there. Um, these are actually, you can switch between ranges remotely with the digital input. So uh, if you click it once, it'll go from range one to two. I click it again, it goes to three. And if you have both active, it goes to four. So a very unique feature. So as you're cleaning or if your process uh, requires media, it has a different uh, range that you want to be able to go through, you can easily do that. And then, uh, like I said, these 14 ranges can be programmed down here. Hmm. Just to, yeah, kind of different. It's not something that everybody offers. Um, we'll get into another yeah. thing that we offer. That's um, it's good to highlight these things that are that are unique to the product. You've got obviously the color changing display, which makes it very simple to know 
um, when things are going well and when things need to be changed. And uh, the, be, to be able to change the ranges, and, and I know that there's other, other features that are very easily configurable like that, um, is, uh, is, is very nice to highlight. And this is, I think you said this goes up to IP69, but you still get the touch screen, right? Correct, yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, a great, it's a great addition. You can program it in the field then. Um, you know, people always worry with the touch screen, can I lock it out? There is a password protection you can put in there so that uh, only certain people have access to it. Um, and then on top of the touch screen, we do offer uh, two other ways to program it, which we'll highlight a little bit later. But uh, with our Flex Programmer, which works on pretty much all of our instrumentation devices. And then uh, as of last year, the AFI comes with IO-Link. You can program through IO-Link as well. Perfect. So just to kind of give you an idea of some of the common things you're going to see in a process environment, um, you know, orange juice, apple juice, beer, milk uh, are down in here. These are easily ranges that we cover. Uh, you'll see that we we specify between 50 millisiemens to uh, 100 microsiemens. Uh, I might have that backwards. Uh, process water, no problem. Uh, Ultra pure water, you can see how low that is. When we get into this uh, ultra pure, pure water, um, that's, you know, there's another technology you're gonna have to look at at that point in time. Um, when we get into this process water area, we can certainly read there. Um, our air factor might go off a little bit, but uh, it's it certainly can be used down there. So 10 is our, our real low end, uh, 50 is our 50 to one semen is our sweet spot. So again, you can kind of see here, uh, phosphoric acid, hydrochloric, sodium hydroxide, those are all typical cleaning solutions for CIP, and then your process materials there. So we mentioned we have the four pre-configured ranges for the uh, conductivity, but one of the unique things that is offered in the uh, AFI-4 for something, or AFI-5, at this price point is we offer concentration functions. So we have four predefined concentrations. These are typical cleaning solution concentrations so that you can turn these on and know that you're dosing correctly when you're trying to CIP your system. And then the last thing is we actually offer four versions that can be 30 point linearized for your, your own use. So you, if you have a custom fluid that you use to clean with or a custom fluid you wanna track, and see if it's meeting specification, you can do that with this unit as well. Hmm. Again, very uncommon for a device uh, in this price point and with these features to include that. Um, if you look at some of the other kind of low-end CIP devices that are out there right now, they don't offer anything like this. Yeah, you, thank you for highlighting that because Baumer has quite a few features at this price point that are very unique and you just you just spit them out that you just talk about them like they're you know but yes that, that is another very unique thing thanks i appreciate it so we're going to kind of go into the the meat and potatoes of it now right the boring parts which is going to be all the, the things we need to know uh one percent accuracy uh by far I, in this again in this price point the most accurate you can get um sample times of three seconds this response time is what's really unique for this device. Uh, two seconds for the conductivity uh, is category leading, but the 15 second temperature response time is by far the fastest on the market. And what this is really gonna help us with is as you mentioned earlier in our phase shifts and our cleanings, um, when we get that temperature response, because the conductivity and measurement is temperature compensated. So uh, the faster we can get that temperature, true temperature, the faster our unit can respond and give you time to uh, maybe cut off the cleaning chemical sooner, uh, save more product as you're cleaning out with water, whatever the case may be. Um, so that's industry leading right there. And then I had mentioned earlier the use of IO-Link. Um, if you wanted to tie in, say, an external RTD like our new PT20 from Balmer, which has about a one second T90 time, um, you can tie that in through the IO-Link and you're uh -huh. now just you're, you're crushing it. You're going to be faster than just about anything on the market right now. Uh, another option. What I mean, you're talking about this. What are some competition response times that are that are standard at this price point? I think I've seen 
45 seconds? I mean, it's not 45 even is a, 45 is a very common. Um, some are up to 60. Um, you know, we've worked very hard on this. This is um, what I call one of our big differentiators. Um, you know, some people might look at this and say it's a Me Too product, but I think we have some real things in there that separate us and make us uh, industry leading. The, the response time and display being one of them, uh, second to none. Uh, the dual output is also one that's pretty unique. Uh, typically, you'll only get one 4 to 20 output. I don't know if I had mentioned yet that you get the dual 4 to 20s. You get the, mm -hmm. the conductivity slash concentration and the temperature output uh, from this device. Uh, another thing we're seeing a lot of people do because part of using the conductivity transmitter is CIP and cleaning. And one of those measurements that you need to take is flow. Uh, people have been integrating our PF20, which is our velocity flow meter which has an RTD in it, and that's typically going to be upstream of the conductivity sensor, uh, taking that temperature output via IO link and taking it into here. And then again, you're down to uh, about a five second response time. Uh, so you're getting your flow, temperature, and conductivity from two devices that are acting uh, very fast to save you time and money in your process. Yeah, and, and then every time you're running that process, you're saving 45 seconds, uh, roughly, or, or more in some cases, of of uh, whatever your, you know, CIP or, or you know, uh, batch. I mean, it's 45 seconds every single time. Adds up, I'm sure. So. We actually have a calculator that, uh, that Andrew has that, uh, or I can provide, that allows you to input your, your current conductivity sensor's time, response time, compared to ours and give you a cost savings over the number of batches and cycles you would do throughout a day, week, and year. So you can actually put a dollar amount to that savings. That's awesome. There will be a link, by the way, for those watching this via video, uh, there will be a link in the description below. So, uh, Like we mentioned, uh, the wetted parts are peak and IP69K with the M12 connectors and appropriate cabling. So again, I just wanted to touch on, I know we're getting a little long here. We're almost out of time. It's about 12.20, so we want to make sure we have time for questions and Q&A and all that good stuff. But uh, one of the things we want to talk about is uh, CIP. That's probably where the conductivity sensor is used the most. So we just wanted to highlight a few things in that real quick. Uh, the function of it in here. So to ensure, like we talked about, is my cleaning solution correct? Do I have the correct batch to make sure, number one, I'm cleaning the piping and tanks enough? And am I not overdosing so that I'm wasting product and perhaps corroding pipes quicker than they need to? Um, even stainless with typical CIP does have some erosion over time. If you tend to overdose your chemicals, you're going to speed that process up and you may have to replace piping or instruments along the way, which gets expensive. And then monitoring the CIP steps. So once we've hit the correct concentration or the correct mix of chemicals, uh, have I cleaned it for long enough at the right concentration or conductivity level? Do I need to add some chemical? Maybe if it's a longer CIP prices, uh, am I getting some water in there that's, that's lowering the, the cleaning effect of it? Um, so again, it's just going to help you monitor it along the way. We talked about the dosing of the chemicals. Uh, it can go right into the tank, it can go in line. Um, this is a great little display here. So we've got our uh, Clever levels to monitor tank level and then pump protection here. Uh, we talked about that last time I was on our, our PL20S. Phase separation, again, this is another one when you're talking things like uh, beer or milk or even soda. When you have to push with water to clean the piping system out, you want to make sure right at the end there, you've got something that can quickly and fast uh, tell you when you've run out of product and you need to switch to the dump cycle or the research uh, pump versus the product pump. You know, you don't want to water down your product and you don't want to put cleaning chemicals into your product. So the fast response to this is really good on that. And then again, just uh, measuring the water and the rinse water. Um, you know, is your water hard? Is there things you need to do to treat your water when you're cleaning to make sure it stays uh, the correct way and offering the best, uh, best options? Now, I know that these are very programmable, Kyle. Can, if you could just back up one second. Um, and I saw that it was labeled water. Um, when the process media changes enough to be called something different, um, it, I, you would get a different name, right, on the yep. screen? Um, would you also, can you program it to get a different color as well? 
Yeah, I think if we hop back here, I can. Yeah, so I guess I'll say thank you very much. This this will be the beginning of the Q and A. Um, yeah, here's the picture. Okay. Yep. So you can uh, change it there. There's four of them that you can have in there. So it can be water, CIP. It could be product, or if it's different products going through the pipe, it could be product one, product two, product three, product four, uh, whatever you need there. So you'll notice here they're giving us the actual measurement and the label of the, in, in picture two here, they're giving us the measurement as well as the product label. Mm -hmm. You're always going to get a milliamp display. Um, here you can see it's a, a percentage with it, uh, the conductivity or concentration percentage, and then your media label down there. Uh, one of the unique things, like I said, you can do in bar graphs. So maybe from a distance, I want to know if my concentration and my temperature here are where they're supposed to be. So from a distance, I can see on a bar graph what's going on in the system without being up close. So another unique option, um, if you go back to some of these other ones, I know we, uh, I always laugh about this, but uh, there's always someone in the plant. I like to see an analog gauge. I want to see a needle move. Well, we can do that for you too. Um, so from a distance, they can see where that needle is and they can decide if they want to come over and check it out further or just keep doing whatever they're doing. <laughs> Little something for everybody. So, well, thank you, Kyle. We're going to open it up to the live Q&A now. I'm going to go ahead and check to see uh, what people have thought. But thank you very much for the presentation.